Welcome back to Samster Games, the place to find new strategy games, and welcome to my five basic tips about Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector. First thing I have to tell you is I'm making these tips while the game is still in a beta, so there might be some changes by the time the game is fully released. However, these tips are about basic mechanics, so I'm not expecting much of a change. Tip number one, optimal range. So in this game, usually a weapon has a variety of ranges. For example, if you hover over this bolt rifle for this unit of intercessors, you can see it has a range from 1 to 6, but the optimal range is 3. So you can either remember that and try to shoot at enemies if they are exactly 3 tiles away. So for this unit, it would be 1, 2, 3 over here. Or you can simply hover over the picture of the weapon and you will see the ranges through these circles. So what are you looking at? What does it mean? Where the circle is the biggest and the brightest, that's the optimal range. So you can see that it's exactly these tiles over here, which are all exactly three tiles away from this unit in any direction. What's really important about this visual representation is that it's also taking into account cover. For example, this unit is behind cover. You can see it by the picture of the shield with the two squares. And when you hover over this unit, you can see that this circle is much bigger than this circle. And that's because the cover is taking it into account. Now, what exactly range affects? Range affects the chance to hit. So if you hover over an enemy unit that you want to shoot, you'll see a chance to hit. And also the damage and how many times you'll shoot. So because this is not the best range, only a 49% chance to hit because they have that cover and because I'm not in my optimal range. If I move closer, so that they're now still behind cover, but at least they're in my optimal range, you're going to see that the chance to hit increased from 49% to 68%. So optimal range is a really important thing. Now, what's really important to note is that this range, optimal range, and this hit accuracy is also effective when you do overwatch. Let's jump to tip number two, and that's Overwatch. So what Overwatch does is allows you to create a reactive zone to which if the enemy steps into this zone, you will be able to take a shot and shoot at them. Now, just like with the optimal range, the Overwatch also uses the same setup for your weapon. So it'll have the same accuracy as if you shot specifically. So for example, if you were looking at this unit, we can see we have 66% chance of hitting it. And I set up an Overwatch here, and let's say this unit was in this hex and it came in, I would have that 68% chance of hitting. Now, when you uh, try to set up your Overwatch, you can see these little eyes and some of the eyes are brighter than others and this is again telling you the optimal range for your weapon so you can for example see that if i set up the overwatch very far here the color is not so bright so the chances of hit hitting here are very low keep in mind that when you set up this area for overwatch you're going to be hitting the enemy who moves into the overwatch area first so for example if i set it let's say like this up to this line for furthest in the back and these gargoyles move in i'm gonna first shoot at them now if then a different enemy moves for example into this hex i will not take that shot because i already used up my overwatch why am I telling you all this? Why is this important? Well, because if you set up a too long overwatch, what can happen is that these gargoyles move in and then you're going to shoot at enemies with this big of a distance, which is going to be a very low chance to hit something like 50%, I would assume. So that's why it's important that you set up your overwatch with the right areas. Tip number three is unit damage and health. So one thing I always like to ask myself in turn-based combat game is how much the health of a unit affects the damage they put out. So in some games, if you have a unit, it will put out the same amount of damage no matter how hurt it is. If it's like fully strong or if it's at half strength, it will put out the same amount of damage. But some games, they, change, they adjust that. Essentially, the idea is that if your unit is less strong, then it shouldn't put out as much damage. And that's the way it works in Warhammer. So, let me show you this unit, this Assault Squad. I have five models, and when I use their attacks, what the number of units affect is how many times they hit. So, for example, if I use this Chainsword attack, they're going to do damage 10 to 14 five times because I've got five models. However, I have this next, this Assault Squad that only has four models, so they're only going to be able to hit four times, one less. If I don't hit three of them, it would be only three times, and etc. 
Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that it does not affect the chance to hit. The chance state is dependent on the optimal range of the weapon like we talked about. It is not affected by the number of models that you have left. So why is this an important question for us? Well, because let's assume that you have an enemy here, this Thermogen, and they have eight fully strong models in a unit and then you have two other units that only have four models per unit so the question i always like to ask myself is what is more beneficial for me should i try to weaken or kill off some models on the one strong unit or should i try to attack at the two lower health unit because remember if this was the game where the unit would give uh, the same amount of damage no matter how many models it had left you would be much better off killing off the weaker units however in this game it does not actually matter what matters is the total number of models that they have so if you have one unit with eight models they do the same damage as two units with four models however there's a bit of a exception here and that's these enemies if you look at them if you get really close you're going to see that they have this little blue hover sort of effect on top of them can you see that it's just a little bit of blueness around okay and if i click on them it's because they have swarm tactics essentially the enemy units get bonus to their damage and the range damage if they're next to another enemy unit how much depends next to how many enemy units they are so this is just 50 percent because they're next to one but for example this unit because it's next to three one two three it will get 150% chance, okay? And that's what the blue glow means. And so this means that you're better off if you have this one unit with eight models or two units with four models, you're better off hitting at the units with four models so that you can fully destroy a unit so that they do not get the bonus. Because this bonus, it doesn't matter if the unit next to me has eight models or a single model, if it's almost dead, it's still going to give me the same bonus. Next, we're going to talk about zone of control. So the way the zone of control works is that each unit has a zone of control. In the hex that they're looking at and the two adjacent hex, so this unit is looking at this hex, so their zone of control are these three hexes, essentially. And what happens if, if I step simply into the zone of control and then attack them, that's fine. I can step inside here and I'm okay. Or I use Tech Marine Karginox and I stepped inside this area, which is zone of control for this and this unit, and I can stay there and attack them, that's fine. But if you try to move out of the zone of control, they will get an opportunity attack on you. How you can see it, you can see it by this little, uh, arrow that will show you that if I try to move the intercessors this way, they will get that opportunity attack on me. There is a way to move out of their zone of control without taking their attack, and that's if you use fallback. So fallback costs you movement points and essentially it gives you evasion. So it gives you a high chance to avoid the opportunity attack that they will do on you. And then typically once you fall back, you can shoot back at the enemy. Now keep in mind that every unit does have the fallback ability. So with the intercessors, you can see that I don't have it right now, but once I move into the hex, it's going to sort of appear here and you can still use it. So every unit has that ability. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, if they have a range attack, of course. Now, in practice, I found that if you use the fallback, the enemies typically don't get a very strong attack on you. But if you just walk away, they will be able to take a, quite a big hit because essentially it's just like a regular attack on them. So keep that in mind. You don't want to step into the zone of control and then step out because unless you use the fallback. Now, keep in mind that the zone of control only applies for melee units, of course. Now, this is a really cool trick that you can utilize. Let me, sh for example, show you. So I can grab this assault squad and I can make it jump to here. And now you can see that if I turn this way, I am now, I have all of these three units in my zone of control. So if they try to move away, I will have an, that opportunity attack on all of them. All right, zone of control attacks. That's exactly why we placed our people here. Oh, I don't think we got a single hit there. But we get multiple zone of control attacks. So that's good. Oh, this was way better. Oh, three zone of control attacks. Beautiful. Now, last thing we got to talk about is a momentum. Every time you kill an enemy unit, you will gain a momentum. How much momentum you get is dependent on the proximity to the enemy unit so your melee 
units will gain more momentum than your ranged units. So for example, you can see that this unit has a momentum of 10. And now once I kill, I will gain an additional momentum. So now I moved up to momentum of 30. If you get to a momentum of 100, you will have an option of empower or search. Now right now in the beta, the only option you can do, choose is search, which will give you an action point. It's important to know that this, this action point cannot be used to move. Normally you can use your action point to move. So for example, if you don't want to attack, I can move and then I can move on this sort of red symbol, which means that I'm using my action point to move. You can see the text is actually telling you minus four MP movement points, minus one AP action point. So you might end up in a situation where you have the momentum, but you don't have anyone around that you could attack because you would need the movement to get there. But keep in mind that you don't lose momentum at the end of your turn. So you can keep your momentum at 100 and then at the start of your next turn, you can move, do your regular attack and then use the search. The only time you do lose the momentum is if you set up overwatch. So keep that in mind. If your momentum is at 100 and you set up overwatch, it will fall back down to 90 and then you need to get it back up again. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this guide. If you did, write down in the comments. Let me know what are your basic tips for Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector. And you can click on the right to watch my Let's Play that I played with this game, or you can watch my Let's Play of Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus.